Next, we're going to be creating the lid that goes on top of the canopic jar. And we have a larger styrofoam cup. You're not gonna put your name or do anything to it. I'm gonna need these back in fact, so be careful with them. And you're gonna feel much like you're repeating the same process we did um, when we made the jar itself. You're gonna take a hunk of clay, put it between two pieces of wax paper, and using a bowl and a fist, you're gonna rock it down to make a slab. Using the top of the cup and a popsicle stick, go ahead and cut another circle. This time, just take your popsicle stick and very carefully hit at the edges to make it not so messy. You're gonna use the bottom part of the cup to figure out how big our coil needs to be. So take another hunk off, working on your table though. You're just using this for size. So if you end up with too much of a coil, just pinch it off. That's about the size of coil that you want. Carefully get it off of there. Now what we're gonna do is figure out where it's gonna go and we're gonna cross hatch it on. Just a little bit of water. Push down so it stays. Now take your popsicle stick and this is called sealing. You're gonna peel the clay into the bottom clay. It's kind of peeling just the edge though. You wanna keep that nice round top. Don't come all the way from the top down, go from the side down. Do the same thing on the outside edge. Support the coil and very carefully peel it into the lid. Now that we've got that done, we can take a little bit of water, not much, and smooth this out. Be gentle with your clay. Try not to touch this rounded part too much. Leave it facing like this so we don't ruin that coil. You do need to use a dry paper towel and just clean your hands off a little bit because when you're working with too much water and clay, it gets slimy. Now we wanna take this other part and start to make an animal head. That's what the canopic jars in ancient Egypt time would have had. I need you to pick one of the animals that they would have depicted. Now when you're working with um, clay, what we've already been doing is just start off with some basic shapes. Like that would be the head. I'm gonna be creating a dog today. And this would be like where the nose and the muzzle part go. But anytime you put two pieces of clay together, you have to score it by cross hatching and you have to add slip or water to make it stick. You also do the same thing to the part you're adding. So I cross hatched and I'm gonna put it on there. Then you're gonna seal it just the way we did with the lid. So you kind of peel the sides of the clay into the head so that now this muzzle will be a part of the head. There are three things to remember when you do clay. We score, we slip with water, and we seal with the clay. You need to smooth as you go with a very uh, lightly damp sponge. Keep that paper towel next to you to keep your fingers dry. And you can kind of position it. This is just like working with Play-Doh. You can form it the way you need. Now, our dog's missing two ears, so we're gonna repeat the process. Right. 
as I'm looking at my dog, I feel like his ears are a little bit too big. It's better to start off too big than too small and because you can always take part of it away if you need to. So keep that in mind when you're building the body parts of the animal. It's better to be too big at the beginning and take away than to start off too small because it's too hard to add the clay to small little pieces. You need to give the neck a flat spot so that it's easy to add it to the top of the lid. The last thing we're gonna do is use our popsicle stick to draw in the details. Just clean the clay off first so you have a nice tip to use. I'm gonna give indents to the ears. And we're gonna paint these later too to add details. What we're gonna do now is very carefully cross hatch the bottom of the neck, add a little water, Make this go in your hand, not on the table, and we're gonna cross hatch right in the middle, very gently, little bit of water, and add the head. What we need to do is add a little coil of, of clay around the base of the neck, and then we're going to seal that in so that you can't tell it's a coil. Hold his head with your thumb and peel it into your lid. Little bit of water to finish smoothing it. Now artists, when something is thick like that made of clay, you have to put a couple of air holes in the back so that it will dry. So we're gonna take a toothpick and put one, two, maybe three holes in the back of the head so you can't see it. This is going to be carried back and put on the plate where our jars are. Your jar still looks like this from last week. So you're gonna kind of push your bag in a little bit. Um, that lip that we made with the coil should fit down in that hole. You're gonna be nice and gentle and place it in there. Kind of flatten your jar lid out like this and you're gonna leave it to dry just like that. For cleanup, you're gonna to need to rinse out your bowl and sponge in the correct sink. You're going to use your rag again to wash your table. And while that is air drying, you may now go wash your hands.